Aloha, top of the morning friends and family. I've got a bag here and I'm gonna open it up and show you what's in the bag in just a moment. But first, if this is your first time to this channel, once a week we upload a beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece. This video is uncut. And today's uncut video, I'm not, I'm not sure what I made the title and thumbnail yet, because uh, but it's probably something about, probably something political, because that's kind of where the idea behind this video started. Now, I want to start by saying I, I don't really like making these videos, but I feel that if I have something that's really deep on my heart that I feel like sharing, that that's probably the most important video to make this week. So that's what we're doing, and my hope is that you get a bunch of value from it. And I think that you only get the most value from this channel when I do that and I am open and raw and share really what's coming from my heart and not just make something surface level. I feel like you get less value when I do that. So that's why I choose to do this. Um, so obviously it's the political climate. I'm speaking with my American um, fellow Americans here, our current political climate. Um, it's been probably, I mean, who knows how long it's been wacky, but it's certainly been wacky recently, you know, with all the different things that are happening. The uh, election coming up this year, and of course the, uh, the conviction of, of Trump and how that's kind of an unprecedented thing to happen in our nation's history, to have a, a president actually get convicted of crimes, um, and whether or not they get appealed, that's a whole different story, but uh, it's just been on the forefront of my media intake, so it's just been obviously pouring out from here to now. Um, and something interesting that I've, I've done for as long as I've known them, uh, my wife, Hillary, and her, her father, my father-in-law, I'll listen to them talk sometimes and listen to them like debate politics a little bit, which maybe isn't something that family is encouraged to do, but uh, I enjoy their talks because they, they're usually pretty good and they're usually pretty well thought and it's just interesting to listen. Every now and then I'll throw a little something in, but more often than not I'm just listening just to hear what their takes are on different things. And it's really interesting because I, I think Steve is probably more um, you know, Republican or, or uh, would be more right-leaning inclined. And Hillary, I, I would think the opposite. You know, she's a bit more liberal and, and more on that side of the political spectrum, if you will. And yet, when I listen to them talk, it seems like Steve Moore tends to take the liberal side and Hillary, like, goes conservative, which is really interesting to listen to. I'm like, what is happening right now? Um, I think part of that stems from just how far we get pushed around um, in our feelings in, uh, in these, these things. And what I tend to do a lot of the time when it comes to a, a controversial subject is I'm usually somewhere in the middle. And I usually end up getting blasted for that because people say I'm taking the easy way out by not like choosing a side, which has been something I've dealt with most of my life, including, you know, dealing with friends, two, two different people that really close to me that don't get along to the point of, you know, like really violent stuff, not picking a side, not, it, it's difficult. It's, e it's not easy. It's not taking the easy way out, I promise. When you're, when you're feeling like you're kind of more middle ground, it's really not the easy way out. It's actually probably harder because you don't really have anybody backing up. You actually have both sides kind of like, you should be over here with us. You should be over here with us. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry. Um, but in, in this case, when it comes to politically, I, I will say that I probably do tend to lean more right and not so much middle, probably more right, which is interesting also because I definitely was not like that in my earlier years, you know, my 20s and probably even early 30s, I was probably the other more more left, I would think. And But it's just the way things have been going, I've been kind of pushed more right, it seems, based on what I see around me. Uh, probably helps that here in the state of California, even though we live in this beautiful place, which I'm happy to be able to take you to. This is actually part of my process of making sure I'm taking care of myself each week because now I'm going to come and bring you for these uncuts out here in beautiful spots where I traverse through nature to get here to film because it's, it's pretty nice and it helps my mental state. Uh, now, the state is what I'm talking about. California, we're in a spot that we don't feel the effects so much of like what's happening in LA. Or I just watched a video recently on San Francisco and how like the uh, target there is just super locked down. Like all the stuff is behind you basically can't take anything and bring it to the counter. You have to have an employee come over and open up a case for you so that you can buy stuff, which isn't the way it is around here. I mean, I was just at the gym this morning going hard with my buddies, which I have been for the last five days. Great for mental health. Um, and at the front of the store of the gym, like it's all these supplements, which are, I'm sure, quite expensive, some of them. And they're all just sitting there open on the shelf and the door's right there open. Somebody could just walk in, 
fill a bag. And there's not even anybody at the front desk. I'm not telling you which gym that is because I don't want anybody to come ransack it. But literally, if you wanted to, you just show up with a truck, have somebody load all that stuff into the truck, which is, I guess, what happens in San Francisco, which is why they have to lock everything down. So because of stuff like that, you know, I, I tend to be like, uh, I don't like that. I want to be I want to be on the side that's not doing that. Um, so that's probably one of the reasons I lean I lean more right as, as well as other reasons, I guess. However, um, there's a couple there's a couple of things when it comes to that. You know, I, I would like to think that I use facts and reason and evidence to come to any of the convictions that I have, which I think I do, which is maybe why earlier, you know, whatever evidence or information I had in front of me, or maybe it was emotions, probably more likely emotions, why I was more left leaning when I was younger versus now. Um, and there's an analogy that my dad has, I th think is really good. It's like the best analogy I've heard for, to describe this situation, where our intellectual and rational brain is a mouse. And it's, it's this mouse, that's our rational brain. And then that mouse is driving, or th likes to think that, that it's in control of what's happening emotionally with us and our emotional brain. And that emotional side of our brain, that emotional driving force is an elephant. And the mouse, the rational mouse is sitting on top of the elephant being like, here's what we should do. We should go this way. And the elephant's like, but I feel like this. <laughs> We're going over here. And I, I think that's such a great analogy for what's happening um, in our society. You know, I think a lot of times, regardless of what the actual facts are, more often than not, a story is told based in or something real, but it, you end up playing to the emotions of the person listening to get them knowing that it's going to work to lean a certain way or go to see your point of view based on their emotional response. Now, if somebody's already dug in feeling certainly a certain emotional way about something, then it's probably really hard to get them to see the other way because they've already had their emotional response. I'd like to think that your rational brain could overcome that, but as we said with the mouse and the elephant, easier said than done, big time. I'm not gonna deny that that mouse can't sometimes convince that elephant to go the way it wants to, but it's, the analogy is the mouse and an elephant for a reason. Um, and there's something else that popped up in my head while I was thinking about this, which is uh, something in one of the Ozzy Osbourne songs, I think it was Crazy Train, Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train. It's just a line out of there, and Ozzy hits on a lot of deep stuff a lot of times in his lyrics. I've, I've grown up listening to him. He says, the media sells it and you live the role, which is my idea of where a lot of us are at. Um, because the, the media knows how to play on our emotions and sell these stories that get us to be like, oh, I, I don't want that, I, I'm against that, and my, all of my emotions are telling me not that, and that's, then we start living into that role of where our emotions are taking us based on what we've been fed by the media. So if you've paid any attention to this channel the last couple of years, I think you know where my allegiance lies, and it is not placed in the hope of what men are going to do and what's going to happen politically. Uh, I'm not saying that that's not going to have a huge effect on a lot of our realities here in this country, but that's not where I place my hope. So there's something that has been happening for a long, long time now, way longer than any of us have been alive and way longer than any of our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents have been alive. I think the first person to coin this phrase was Philip II out of Macedon, um, divide and conquer later to be used by Julius Caesar and Napoleon, and it is very, very effective. And I think it's still at work very much today, even more honed in and fine-tuned than it has been in, in history. Uh, yeah, still very much used today. You play on people's emotions one side or the other, and it kind of takes away from what could be the solution, in my opinion. So. Who are you going to vote for come the election? I mean, I know who I would like to, you know, honestly, any candidate that I've ever been interested in is never on one of the big sides of the left or the right. It's always been somebody else who doesn't even make it into, which is unfortunate because I know that, that that makes it hard for folks that are in, firm in their convictions of like, we're voting for this side. And if you're not helping out with that and you're just voting for this person who's never going to win, what are you doing with your vote? So... I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would probably lean towards RFK um, just based on the stuff that I've heard him talk about, his family history, as well as just things like that. But I don't know. 
for sure. I'm, I know who I'm not voting for. <laughs> but uh, listen, again, b based on everything I've been talking about, my, my main point here is that I don't think that's the real solution. And although it may be a, a temporary solution, I don't think it's the ultimate solution. I think the ultimate solution is coming together, easier said than done, of course, but coming together as a country, which the solution and how you arrive there is having open conversations with your neighbor, talking with people that you disagree with and wanting to hear their side and, and understanding why it is they even have a conviction that is so against what you might be convicted of and talking through that. And if you go into those conversations thinking that I'm just, I don't think they're, they're crazy and there's no way I'm, they're going to, I'm going to understand why they see this that way. Or maybe you already have an idea of like that you think this is, this is why they see it this way. And this is why I don't agree with that. I think that if you go into those conversations with that mindset, we're never going to get anywhere. Um, so when you start those conversations, you need to go in with a true want and a, a true desire to love your neighbor and to understand your neighbor and to truly listen and understand where it is they're coming from. Otherwise, otherwise it's just this. It's that and it's split, it's divide, it's it's war, it's detriment, it's not good. Um, so that's, that's what I would encourage you to feel. I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this this week as well. And I'm going to do it in a way that could be detrimental to myself, my own personal, but I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to have that hard conversation with somebody I know that I know really probably lines up on a lot of opposite things as me. <laughs> I know this because they have said as much. And I didn't really take any time to voice my opinions on why I feel the opposite on some of these things. And I'm going to have that conversation. And I'll let you know how it goes. I'm going to do my best to, to listen as well as speak the points that I think are valid and why I think and feel that, or why I think it feels such, such, so differently. And hopefully that leads to more understanding. And hopefully if that type of conversation takes place all across our not just our country but the world that will just lead to more understanding which would be a good thing for everybody i think um yeah and that's 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 my take on it i'll, I'll show you what's in this bag feel free to go in the comments what, what i don't recommend doing this well definitely please go in the comments leave me your thoughts i'd I love to read them even if you completely disagree with anything i said I'd love to hear about it and why um though i don't think that's the most uh Efficient, not efficient, but uh, the most, it's not going to have the best results all the time. The best results are going to come from, uh, the best results are going to come from having face-to-face, -face, or at least over the phone, voice-to-voice -voice conversations about these topics. Those, those uh, battles out in the comments and the text-based, especially public comment section, those seem to go downhill pretty fast because, you know, it's, if, for the reasons we all know, if we've spent any time on the internet, which I think a lot of us have at this point. So yeah, in person or at least over the phone and not through text would be the best way. So I had a friend ask me, actually it was Lucas over at Lab Exotics, if I could show an update on my um, goat line retic, of course who I got from my buddy Garrett over at Reach Out Reptiles, and do a little update. And look, the sun just started shining right in this little section right here, which is pretty good timing. So. See if I can block out my face and get focused on the snake here. Just wanted to show an update. And I said that I would, so I am. This is the goat line. He's a, uh, this is Shetty Spaghetti. Again, goat line retic, which was Krampa, Kalatoa, and <laughs> the other one that I can never remember. Sulawesi. Um, pretty cool. Hopefully you're able to it's focusing on him and you're able to see he's moving around quite a bit. He, he hiked with me in my backpack in that bag so that he could be in this video. And now he's ready to move and groove. But that is a pretty sweet snake. And hopefully you're able to get what you need from this. If not, I can send, I can definitely send put, uh, pictures. But there he is. Look all squirmy and snaky. And I'd really love to just like let him crawl around in the creek. I'm not going to do that. But I think that would be pretty cool. I'd prefer to take them to a more controlled environment like my, my house and the trees around it. Um, even though this creek would probably be pretty fun for him. Maybe a little cold. Maybe a little cold. But 
we won't be having water in this section for a whole lot longer. So I'm going to come down here for more uncuts and while we still have water to sit by, give me that calm peace of mind. Did you hear that gastrointestinal noise squeeze out of them? It was holding right next to the mic, so I imagine you can hear that if I can hear it. Yep. Anyway, that's it for the day. Leave your comments down below and let me know what you thought about any of this. I, again, would love to read about it because I love to hear what people think and why people think that way. I find it highly interesting. Um, and until the next video, y'all take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you then. Aloha.